Hello and welcome back. This is L.A. Rathbone. This is part six of the Slackware series. I know it's been a while, but um, I kind of ran out of ideas of what to do. But some people had made some suggestions, and I think that today I'm going to focus this episode on package management, which we've already talked about in a little bit of detail. Um, but uh, we're going to get into some more advanced concepts today. Now, something that really kind of throws a lot of people off is dependency management. Now, this is not something that's really specific to Slackware, this part of it, but hopefully, you know, if, you're, if you've been wondering about, about dependencies, um, this might be a little bit helpful to you. Now, basically, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of different kinds of dependencies. There's library dependencies, there's binary dependencies, there's a dependency on just some text file or some other uh, sort of <coughs> device or other file being there. But the, I think the most common type of dependency issues that throw people off are library dependencies. So I'm going to just take a little bit of time to talk about those. I'm not going to get into anything too advanced, but um, let's just uh, go through a basic example. Now, if you have a full install of Slackware and you just keep it like that, you're not going to have any dependency issues. A full install uh, has been specifically compiled to work and it's not going to give you any dependency issues out of the box. It's a very large install. There's a lot to work with, but if you start playing around and start removing packages and start adding your own packages or trying to build your own packages, you're going to or you may run into some dependency uh, issues. So, let's let's again, let's talk about library dependencies. Let's go to our user bin directory. Let's just use our usual poprox user for now. Um, and I'll give you a simple example. Um, there's, there's a program called AUG123, and it, uh, well, it's not exactly working on my machine right now, but but if, if you run the help with the dash H uh, uh, command, it'll give you, it'll display help, and if you run dash V like this, it'll display the version. So that just shows the program's working. Uh, I don't have sound uh, activated on this virtual machine, but you'll see that it's working. Um, now let's take a look at what what libraries this uh, this application uh, needs. We're already in the user bin directory. We know aug123 is in the user bin directory. We're on the ldd command on aug123, which tells you its library dependencies. So you'll see a list of many, many um, dependencies. Um, and one of them is the third from the top, libvorbis.so.0. Now, uh, let's let's remove that library from our system and see what happens. Okay, so first off, let's find out using this. This is Slackware specific. Let's find out where that file is coming from, which package is providing it, because because we know it's part of the base system. So let's grep lib vorbis.so.0 and let's search for that within var log packages anything, and we see that it is in the libvorbis package. libvorbis dash and then any package name in Slackware always has the, or for the most part, it doesn't have to, but any standard Slackware package has the uh, name of the actual uh, program or, or uh, package or library, what have you, dash the version number, 1.3.3, dash the architecture, that's the standard architecture for the 32-bit Slackware 14.0, i.e. the i486 architecture, dash one, which is the release number, which means that they've only put out one release of that on Slackware. They haven't patched it or made any changes to it uh, subsequently. So let's uh, remove that package from our system. We need to become the super user to do so. Switch to the super user using our password. Remove package, and the easiest way to do that is to point right to the actual log entry in var log packages, libvorbis, and use tab completion so that we avoid errors. Hit enter doesn't prompt us, it just deletes the package. So it's gone. So if I now try to run aug123-v, I'm now going to get an error saying error while loading shared libraries cannot open uh, that particular library which we um, that it requires because we just deleted it. So this is not like other operating systems whereby if you try to delete the libvorbis file uh, library it'll say no, 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 you can't do that because you have aug123 installed and you have some other program installed that requires libvorbis. It just does it, and it's up to you, the user or the administrator, to 
to know what 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 packages depend on what. And again, that's that. There's advantages and disadvantages. I I like that myself, but uh, for some people, it's not their cup of tea. Um, I just realized I don't have that package uh, on my hard drive, but I think I think if I go Slack package install, I can get it back pretty easily. Let's try that anyway. There we go. It's, that, this will just put it back onto our system pretty easily. You could also fetch it manually from the Slack or FTP servers and download it again and install it again, but uh, that's a pretty easy way to get it back. And if we just run aug123-v, now aug123 is working again. So you, you've really got to watch for that. You've got to just run your programs and see um, which libraries are required to uh, to run your applications. Uh, library dependencies are not particularly complicated. Um, if we go into user lib, we'll see that you can also run the LDD command on libraries. So if I run it on lib of Orbis, um, dot so dot dot whatever, dot 0 .4 and just to show you real quick, the point O is a symbolic link to that file anyway. So let's just run it on the actual file the LDD command, you see that file, that library itself has many dependencies of its own. It requires lib aug, which makes sense because it's aug vorbis, um, the vorbis uh, uh, codec requires the aug container format library to run. So that's a pretty logical uh, example of that. Now let's talk a little bit about um, actual how, how Slackware packages work. Um, and let's just jump right in to do this. I only have eight minutes left, uh, so let's see if I have time to start this. I may need to finish it on the next episode. So let's let's start off by, let, let's make a, a package um, for a program called MP3 Blaster. It's a simple command line MP3 player. Let's go to our user circ. Let's go to our user circ directory. You'll see we have the Linux sources already here. Actually, let's let's make it user local, circ. That way, we're not uh, messing around with uh, system uh, directories. And let's create uh, a folder here called uh, MP3 Blaster. And we're doing this all as root, by the way. Running, um, building packages as normal users, not really the Slackware way. I used to do that when I had uh, when I was making packages using Red Hat, but I don't do that anymore using Slackware. You can, but it's not really it makes things it makes life a little more difficult. So let's go to mp3blaster.sf.net to fetch the sources, downloads, etc. There we go. Just find it here. Here it is. It's a little bit older, of an older program. It hasn't been updated since 09, but I've tested it and it should work just fine. So we click there. We click here again. Click on the direct link. And I want to save it. Let's save it in user, oops, user, circ, oops, mp3 blaster, slash, and then that location. Oh, oh, sorry, wrong. Uh, Wrong folder, user local circ. Okay, and I believe it should already be done. No downloads. So we can quit links. Yes, I really want to quit it. You'll see we have the uh, the tar ball there now. Let's extract those sources using tar xf mp3 blaster. You'll see we now have uh, the um, folder there. Why is it? Just ignore me here. Okay, never mind. I don't know why it's it has those those, those permissions like that, but I'm not going to really, really worry about that. Okay. So now basically, actually let's backtrack a little bit. Let's make a new folder in here called dest. That's going to be our destination as to where our uh, install of the, of the application is going to go. That's that's a temporary location. And in that, let's also make... Actually, let's leave it for now. Let's go into the mp3 blaster sources. This is a standard auto-conf and auto-make um, source uh, tree. 
So let's run dot slash configure. And we, we don't want to use the defaults here. We want to make our prefix into the user directory. Otherwise, it'll go into user local, which isn't really what you want to do when you're building a package. That's fine if you're just running running these, these things manually and installing by the, the old school way. But we're making a package. It should really go into user. Let's make sysconf dir equal etc. Otherwise, it would just go into user etc., which is not a standard location. Let's make our mander user man, because I believe this program tries to put it to user share man, which is not the standard location for Slackware. Let's run that command. Give it a second here. It's just doing its usual tests. And that ran just fine. Let's make now. That's the next thing that you run on a standard autoconf and automake uh, source tree. And then when that's done, we're then going to go ahead and run make install. But make sure the next part's important. Make sure you put it in. Dester equals user local circ mp3 blaster dest. Otherwise, it'll, it'll install it in your actual computer. We don't want to do that. We want it to go into the dest folder. So let's go into the dest folder. You'll see we have user and then bin, which is where our actual application will end up being. Um, but we, if you look in user man, man1, it has our man pages. But any standard Slackware man page, as you'll see, is zipped up. So we want to do that here. So let's run find user iname, iname sorry user man iname star dot star. Let's make sure that it's listing our files there, and it is. Let's run xargs gzip to zip all those files up. Then if we look at this now, you'll see that all of our man files are zipped up. So we also want to create a install directory. This is specific to Slackware. And in that directory, you're then going to put a file called Slack Desk in there. Now, don't uh, don't worry, but I have a template. It's already stored on my root uh, part uh, uh, folder. I'll post a copy of that in the show notes. It will not be on your system uh, by default. So let's copy that template into in the install folder. Let's go into the install folder and run vi on Slack Desk to edit it. Um, we don't want. It's not called app name. This program is called mp3 blaster. So we're going to run the colon and then percentage, which means run the following command on every line. S, that means replace, slash app name, slash mp3 blaster, slash g. That means replace app name with mp3 blaster all throughout the file. Let's adjust this handy ruler Oops. so that it's, so that it's uh, in line with the colon, which cuts it off a bit on the screen, but don't worry about that. Change the description to MP3 Blaster is a command line interface MP3 player. That should do. WQ to quit that. Ugh, and VI, I haven't changed that behavior. It's making backups. Let's delete that backup there. Okay, so now we have everything we need. We're in this desk folder that has everything we need in the package. So we're going to run the following command to change it into a package now. Make PKG. Um, let's put it into the parent folder, MP3 Blaster. MP3 Blaster, and let's do some, some tab completion to give us some guesses. That's the right version. And then dash i486, that's the architecture. Dash 1, that's our first release. Dot TGZ. You could do TXZ, but I'm going to leave it as the TTGZ for simplicity's sake. Hit enter. It wants to know if we want to reset our permissions. I don't because we did this all as root anyway. I'm going to say no. And there we go. We have our package. And we can install it using install pkg dot dot mp3 blaster dash i486, etc. with tab completion. Hit enter. We've installed the package. And now if I exit as root and run this program as pop rocks, it's working. And if I want to remove the package, I just run the remove pkg command. And I can again look for it in varlog packages, mp3 blaster, hit enter, and it's gone. That was a, <laughs> a bit of a rapid fire demonstration there, but that's all the time I have for this episode um, of the Slackware series. If you have any questions, let me know. This is pa uh, L.A. Rathbone 
signing off. Good night and good luck.